Hi, welcome to my Walkman Archive channel on YouTube. This time I would like to show you this Iowa ADWX909, which was one of the best dual decks that this run released in its whole history. This deck, I'll turn it on, is a very interesting model because it combines a standard two-head deck with another, more advanced, three-head deck on the right. It really is a unique model and has no competitors in its category as none of other decks had a three-head deck inside. It is second-hand and I've got it in the Flea market. Externally, it is in excellent condition. The front is almost perfect, no visible scratches at all. Just a little wear here and here and a little thing here. In general, the condition is excellent. It has been serviced by ANT Audio in London, UK. Restoration work has been quite difficult because, although the left deck was in very good condition, the right deck had a broken bearing of a castan and another problems too. So Alex at ANT Audio had to do a great difficult work replacing parts of it with parts of a different model. Since they could not be assembled di directly, he had to manually make modification to this until they could finally get used. It is a deck that looks more modern than it is since it was launched in 1987. So today, in 2014, is 27 years old, but in my opinion it doesn't look so old, does it? I think it has a very elegant design that can see time passing by without aging a lot. It is controlled mainly with feather touch buttons, not those old piano case. All buttons in these areas are feather touch. The only manual buttons are those that open the doors, and I will put two tapes right now. In addition, there are several switches to select certain functions that I will explain later. Mechanically, it's a very curious deck because it does not share elements between the two decks as usual, but there is a completely independent deck in the left and another completely independent two in the right. Each one has its own motor, bells and or other circuitry. This one on the left is a standard two-head deck, amorphous as shown here. And the right one is a three-head deck with the usual switch to monitor the recording so you can listen to the sound source, vinyl, CD, radio or whatever, or you can choose to monitor the tape while recording, which means that you can hear what is being recorded while recording. That's a feature impossible to see in any other dual deck but this one as it's typically found in three-head decks. Transport is driven by belts, so it is not direct drive. It features auto-reverse, but only in this deck, not in this one, and therefore has a switch for three different modes, with no auto-reverse at all, one cycle and continuous. The auto-reverse is very quick, it's a system that Iowa offered in those years and works by detecting the translucent tape at the end of each side. Construction is almost entirely metallic, as the upper cover, while the front panel is a mixture of metal and plastic. For example, these areas right here are metallic, but these buttons are made of plastic. But overall, it is very stiff and very heavy as well. It has a big display, actually there are three small displays in here. 
you see two counters here. If I press play here, you will see the left counter increasing and if I press play here, you will see the two counters increasing. Here there are also the level meters, but they are not as detailed as it seems. There are many dots in here, but in fact, there are many much less segments here, as every segment combines three dots. So here you see one, two, three, four, five, so it's not as accurate, but it's still okay. This deck features a dual Dolby system, one completely independent for each deck, so there is a single switch for both, and you can choose Dolby B and C for this one and for this one too. You see the LED lights going on? These LEDs are showing which Dolby type you select. It also features Dolby HX Pro, but this one is always enabled and cannot be disabled. You, but you may remember that it only works while recording and not while playing. It has no DBX, which if you don't know it, it's a very advanced noise reduction system. But her little sister, the WX808, which is a slightly lower spec deck, has it, although this model doesn't have a 3 head deck in the right. This deck has no tape type selector because it's automatically detected. It features music search that automatically searches for the beginning of the next or the previous songs. Both decks have this feature. A very useful feature is that it can queue on review just by keeping pressed these buttons right here. It also features auto blank skip and if you activate this switch and wait a moment, you will see that it will automatically start winding the tape forward to find the beginning of the next song. What about recording? While recording, you can adjust the recording level manually with this knob. This inner one is for the right channel and the outer one for the left channel. Of course, you can see the effect with the level meters. But how do the levels work when you are duplicating tapes? Well, the right deck has priority over the left deck. This means that if both are playing, the one on the right is shown. However, it has both outputs for both decks, so you can connect both to an amplifier or another device to receive the sound of both decks even simultaneously. But if you want to use headphones, you can choose with this switch right here which deck you want to listen to. Moreover, being a three-head deck, you can adjust the bias. This is usually done while recording and monitoring the tape, so you can adjust it to each particular type of tape and get a flat response and excellent sound quality. This is possible thanks to the three head that the right deck has. However, it has no internal signal generators to help perform a calibration, as many high-end decks have, nor automatic calibration functions that do all the process automatically. Anyway, there's a sticker on the top with a lot of notes suggesting the best setting for the bias knob to help you find the best adjustment for many different tapes, going from normal to chrome tapes. In this deck, bias doesn't work with metal tapes. Regarding the sound quality, the fact is that it is very good, but not as good as the best simple decks, like a Nakamichi RX501, a Sony K909ES, or an Akamishi Dragon, but you may not forget that this is a dual deck. The quality of the decks, the both decks inside, is actually very high, much better than the vast majority of dual decks. It probably stands at the top of the dual decks category. This is probably the best double deck that have ever been made, so you guess the quality is really very good. Furthermore, 
this particular unit has been serviced by ANT Audio and with new belts and all the internals readjust, it performs exactly as when new. And that's all. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.